Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and they just released Vegas Pro 19 today, so I wanted to show you the updates to the colorization AI that they put inside Vegas 19. I'm gonna drag and drop a couple of test images that are just black and white photos that I downloaded off the internet, and we're gonna colorize them with Vegas's new updated colorization plugin. When you select the plugin, you only have two options, the default and the enhanced model. We're just gonna throw the default onto the test image one, and then we'll see right off the bat it did a pretty decent job. When we look at the menu here, we have a bunch of options. We have luminance enhancement, so if you select that, that basically does its best to even out a little bit of the brighter and darker spots. Sometimes you can't even really see it doing that much of a difference, but for specific black and whites, you will notice a difference. Under model, we drop that down, we have the basic and the enhanced version. We could see that when we choose enhance, it really fine tunes the color around the top part of the image right there. So sometimes, basic may work better for you. But in this instance, Enhanced looks awesome. Under that, we have Precision. If we drop down that menu, we have Low, Medium, High, or Match Output Size. This is essentially saying how precise do you want this, but sometimes, depending on the black and white, trying to get it more precise may actually do a worse job. So you see when we choose Medium here, the colors on the top of the image become a little bit incorrect. And if we choose High, we don't see any beneficial changes either. And then Match Output Size, which is the highest precision level, also doesn't seem to do much. So I'm gonna bring that back down to low. Then under that we have two invert options, invert green and red and invert blue and yellow. You can check those if it applies to your image that you're trying to color, but for me I'm gonna leave those unchecked. Then the next option under there is shift between green and red and it's a slider. By default it's on zero and you can drag it back all the way to negative one or drag it forward all the way to positive one. But you can see if you do it too far it makes way too drastic of a change. So sometimes subtle movements here are really what's needed. Next, we have shift between blue and yellow, which does the same thing, but with those two colors. For the last two options, we have gain on green and red and gain on blue and yellow. So this basically means it's gonna saturate or desaturate just those two colors on whichever slider you're choosing. So if we move the green and red slider to the left, we'll see that it's taken away the greens from the bushes and making them more yellow. And if there were reds in the picture, it'd be taking away from the reds as well. Same thing if we drag the slider for blue and yellow. It's either going to increase the blue and yellow saturation or decrease it. Obviously, you don't want to go overboard with it, so little subtle bits of saturation improvement can really help. So there's what a final result of the first test image looks like, and it looks pretty good to me. Coming from a straight black and white to adding color like that, it's pretty awesome. Next, we're going to drag the default onto test image 2. This image is just of a long stretch of the highway in the desert. Again, black and white, and then when we add the colorization onto it, it looks like it does a pretty decent job. Again, we're gonna adjust it a little bit and see if we can make it look a little better. For the luminance enhancement, I'm gonna change that to apply to output, although I'm not really seeing a difference in this picture right now. For model, I'm gonna change that to enhanced, see what it looks like. And that looks a lot more natural to me when it's enhanced. I wanna increase the gain on blues and yellows a little bit, and let's see how changing the precision affects the picture. Medium, looks like it's adding a bit of red splotchiness, but it is making it a little more defined, which, you know, could be a benefit. High. Seems to add a lot more red in the road right there while not affecting anything else. Match input size really doesn't look too much more different than high. So I think I really like to load the best on this one as well for precision. Adding a little bit of red into the picture makes it look a little more natural to me, just a little bit. And I think barely just changing this value to negative one looks good too. If I reduce the saturation on greens and reds, I think it really pulls the picture together well but teeter-tottering the balance between the shift between greens and reds and the gains on greens and reds is a pretty delicate dance. And there we go. I like the result. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like before and after. Here's a side-by-side, -side. and honestly, it looks really great to me. That's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there. That'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.